Hi, everybody. I'm Mehdi Nooruzi, and this is a joint work with Hamid Christi of Islam UNBC and uh, my advisor, Paul Favar, at the University of Bern. To learn visual representations in a supervised setting, we can train a convolutional neural network that takes an image as input and predicts some annotations like category label as output. By training on lots of labeled data, the network builds a, a hierarchical representation that can be repurposed on other data sets and tasks like uh, object detection, semantic segmentation, visual question answering, and etc. Here is the problem. These annotations are costly, time consuming, and prone to error. We can address this problem by learning the similar representation in a self-supervised learning setting by solving a pseudo-task that predicts some automatic annotations ex extracted from data. The pseudo-task is designed such that the network needs to explore the structure of the data to find the right output. These automatic annotations are low-cost, more scalable, and flexible. Our community during the last couple of years has looked at different sources to provide supervision signal, like context, reconstruction from partial observations, using temporal information in videos, and the signals of other domains that come with visual data, like even motion and sound. Here, we introduced a novel pseudo task uh, by uh, counting visual primitives. In general, uh, by learning representation, we want to learn a distance metric based on the final target that we are going to do. We are interested in high level uh, semantically related tasks, uh, and therefore, we need to represent data into a space such that the comparison based on the semantic content is easy. One way to do this is to answer the, uh, the, the following questions during the training to the network. What data points are similar and what data points are dissimilar? And the network will discover, will discover that. In a supervised setting, we answer these questions using labels. We tell the network, this is a dog, and it's similar to this because this is also a dog, and is this similar to this because the, the labels differ. Can we answer these questions automatically? The answer of the second question seems easy. If I take two random images, they most likely do not share the same semantic content. How about the first one? This looks more challenging. We define a similarity based on counting. If I take the image and divide it into its tiles, and count some visual primitives, then sum them up, it should match the number of visual primitives of the, on the original image. More precisely, we want to learn a function phi that maps our data to a, to a space that if I sum them, uh, sum the, the tiles up, the, reason, the, the result is equal to the original image. We call this the counting task. Here is more details about the implementation. Given two random images, we randomly crop two sub-windows, divide the first one into tiles, get the downsampled version of the others, add it to, uh, feed it to a, a six columns convolutional neural network in a Siamese architecture. All the layers from the beginning to the, to the, to the end uh, share the same weight. Sum the output of the tiles. This should match the original image. This is our similarity criteria and this should be far apart from the random image. And this is our dissimilarity criteria. In the end, we take convolutional layer of one column, and this is our learned representation. We train our model on, on ImageNet using no label and transfer the, the learned representation on different benchmarks. Here, I only mentioned the fine tuning on Pascal. As you can see, uh, by the time of submission, our method achieved the state of the art on uh, different tasks on Pascal. Recently, we have released our new Jigsaw task, 
uh, with a, and boosted, uh, uh, and it boosted the performance and evaluating on the same architecture, uh, still the counting task uh, is ranked as second. One challenge of self-supervised learning is to provide the shortcuts. By shortcuts, I mean the undesired solution of the pseudo task. For example, if you train this task uh, on, using, on only RGB images, the performance on the detection task is, is higher than the case that when you train only on, uh, on grayscale images. This suggests that the network is taking some low-level statistics like chromatic aberration to solve the task. Well, we do not want to eliminate co color completely. We found that training on, on the combination of uh, color and grayscale images gives better performance on transfer learning. The other shortcut that network can take is to detect the downsampling method. Every downsampling method introduces a tiny pattern uh, in the image. Surprisingly, we found that network can detect that, uh, downsamp uh, that tiny pattern and cut, connect the, the tile to the original image using that. To, pre to prevent this, we confuse the network by randomly picking a downsampling method during the training. As you can see in the table, the result when you use this technique is significantly better than the case that we train only on one, one downsampling method. Other observations was that the, uh, the learned counting vector tends to, uh, to a uh, tends to be a few uh, non-zero entries. For example, if you train on ImageNet using uh, thousand, uh, thousand uh, dimensional FC8 layer, uh, we found that there is only 40 non-zero elements. To see the impact of this, we trained the, network, the same network using uh, 20 dimensional uh, FC8 layer, and we, we found that uh, the network is, is uh, able still to learn uh, high quality uh, representations. Also, we looked at uh, the, the sensitivity of the network on the training set, the training, data si uh, training set data size, and we found that having more data during the training gives higher performance in transfer learning. To get some insight of what network is, is looking at at the very, very final layer, uh, we do some qualitative analysis. In this slide, we show uh, nearest neighbor search on the final counting vector, as you can see, mostly uh, images with the same semantic contents are retrieved. Note that this is done on the four, on 40 dimensional vector in which there is only 20 uh, non-zero element on average per image. This is the same experiment trained and tested on COCO dataset. Also, we looked at uh, the, the uh, the neuron activations of our final counting vector. In this slide, we show the most activating images of three of our counting vectors. As you can see, when the network is trained on ImageNet, we have a neuron that fires on dark, and when we have multiple instances of dark, uh, the, it, it gives higher responses. The same experiment on COCO shows that we have a neuron which fires on uh, a person playing baseball, and uh, bus, and dishes, and so on. To conclude, we introduced a novel self-supervised learning task based on counting visual primitives. We showed that the counting uh, uh, pseudo task achieves a state of the art on different transfer learning benchmarks. Also, we showed that blocking shortcuts is very effective to learn better representations. Thank you, and I ha would be happy to take questions. We have time for one or two questions. Sala Perla, Sala Dersena, someone? I have one then. Uh, how would you expect that this would work, that this would figure out something interesting in, let's say, images that contain only stuff where things cannot be counted? Do you think it would be doing something beyond just counting things? Um, Let's say grass or, you know, toilet. Your question is that uh, why it works, right? No, I can perfectly understand that it would work, you know, with persons 
uh, things that are quite distinct, like objects which stand out. But if you had stuff which cannot be necessarily counted. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, well, th in this slide, I'm showing, if you, if you look at this, I'm showing the, the, the lowest and highest magnitude images in the, in the data set. Something like grasses uh, that only have texture, uh, if you look at them, when you have only texture, in terms of high level concept, you do not, ha you do not have anything. You have something that is, that, that is repeating. So in this case, the network puts everything to zero. Basically, it says that I, ha I, I, have, uh, I, I, I don't see anything high level here. So as you can see here, grasses is something like a texture, and we do not have uh, strong responses on them. But uh, contrary on the images uh, in which we have multiple instances of, uh, of higher level concepts like human, like the other objects, uh, we have uh, quite a strong magnitude or, yeah. Do you have any intuition why this approach is better than other self-supervised -super techniques? Well, it's a very general question, why it's better. Um, I would say uh, these uh, things are quite sensitive to the way that you implement them. In theory, most of them uh, uh, should work well, uh, much better. <laughs> but the way that to implement, there are, there are many techniques that, that we applied uh, uh, to make it work. And uh, well, the answer is that I, in general, I don't know why it is working better than the others. But I do know that uh, the techniques that you, that you are doing in the implementations uh, are quite important. All right, let's thank the speaker again and prepare for the next one.